Hello, in Master Budget Part 7, we're going to continue with our cash budget that we started in Part 1 of the cash budget. We did the cash receipts. Now we're going to go down and look at the cash budget. So we've got our cash budget. Here's our cash receipts. Now we're going to look at cash disbursements. This is going to be comprised of all the cash outflows that we are going to do, going to have for the quarter. I'm going to do the um, lagged purchase payments differently than I did the lagged receipts. So we start with our cost of purchases. Now in this budget, the company is only buying materials on credit. And so the cost of purchases deals with direct materials and comes from our direct materials budget. So we're going to be looking at how we're going to pay those, and that's going to come from our assumptions. So we're going to start with um, the prior month's purchases. Now, this is the payments that we still have outstanding for the prior month, and that's going to come from our beginning um, balance sheet. In the last demonstration, I mentioned that we would be using the accounts payable as of December 31st, 2009. Those will be paid in January 2010. So I'll pick those up as my prior month's purchases. Current month's purchases, we're not going to pay for all of them, but only a percentage, which is in our assumptions. So we're going to start with equals the cost of the purchases and now we'll go over to our assumptions and up to whoops, sorry about that <coughs> it didn't pick up the there we go times and now we'll go over to our assumptions and look at what is our assumption for the current month the current month of direct materials purchases is 30% is going to be paid in that current month. So we we'll click on there and I'm going to click on F4 because we're accessing our assumptions. So you can see that right now we have cost of purchases times C61 with the dollar signs to make it absolute. Now, the current month, we can copy across, and it will keep taking the correct percentage of our purchases. The prior month, remember, for January, and we've lost our title, so I'll put them up here. So we got January, February, March, and the quarter. Now, the prior month purchases is January. So we're going to do equals January and times, and we're going to go to our assumptions and up to the cash disbursement assumptions, which is 70% in the prior month. F4 to get the dollar signs, and you can see it there in the equation, and then we hit enter. So now I can copy that across, and that's picking up the um, January here, prior month, and this will pick up February right here, I-93, the prior month. So we have uh, auto sum, and we want to sum January through March of the prior, and auto sum for the current, and now we just have to add the two together. So prior month plus current month, this will be our total payments for January, February, March, and the quarter. So we have these payments here that we'll have to consider, and then we are also going to have our payments for our direct labor. Remember, that's going to come from our labor budget, so I'm going to put equals. And I want this to change as I copy it across, so I'm going to go up to my direct labor budget, which is right here, and I'm going to pick up my direct labor costs. And then I need my overhead. Now remember, with the overhead, we subtracted out the um, depreciation, 
So I'm going to pick up the cash payments for overhead. So here's my overhead budget. We'll go down to the actual cash payments after I deduct the depreciation. Se selling, the next one is selling an admin equals, and I'm going to go up, same thing, I'm going to pick up my cash payments. This is my selling an admin. I'm going to pick up my cash payments for selling an admin. And other is if we have any capital acquisitions. So I'm going to copy these across and we'll auto sum for the quarter these three and copy those that down. Now let's go over and look at our assumptions and see if we had any capital budgeting. It looks like in April we're going to purchase equipment for $20,000. So we're going to go down here to our cash budget again and here's our capital acquisition but we're not going to purchase anything until April so we won't have any cash capital acquisitions for um, this quarter but if we did we would just reference them into the appropriate month so now we'll total up our um, payments now notice my box drew all of this but I've already done a total here of my payments for my direct materials. So I need to just total from the green line down. Don't, because otherwise we would count these numbers up here twice. So I'm going to total that across. And that's my total disbursements. So we've got total disbursements here, and I'm going to make those. make those a color so we can see them. We'll say we make them a lot. Oops, not that. This. Make these blue. A light blue. Okay. And now net cash inflows. Well, we'll have net cash inflows if we have more cash coming in than going out. So yellow is our cash receipts. And blue is our cash disbursements. And notice we have more cash receipts than cash disbursements. So this will be a positive number. So we'll do yellow minus blue, which is our cash receipts minus our cash disbursements. So we had a net cash inflow for the month of $892. And we can copy that across. Notice that in February, we actually have a more cash disbursements than cash receipts. March, we've got more cash disbursements than cash receipts. And for the quarter as a whole, we have more. Now, the last bit is to come up with our cash balance. Beginning cash balance for the quarter is going to come from our income statement. Or, I'm sorry, our balance sheet at the beginning of the, of the um, quarter, which is the end of last year's or end of last quarter's balance sheet. So we started with 25000 <clears throat> So we started with 25000 in January. And we brought in 892 more than we spent. So we add these two, and we have an ending balance of 25892 January's ending balance becomes February's beginning balance. February's beginning balance. Now we're going to see our balance go down because when we add these two, we've now dropped to 20,634. February's begin or March's beginning balance is February's ending balance. <clears throat> and we add these two together. And our ending balance for March is 17,400. Now for the quarter, the beginning cash balance for the quarter is the beginning cash balance in January. So I'm going to pick up January. And my ending cash balance is the ending cat must be the ending cash balance for the quarter. But I'm going to use this, these two here to make sure that these two numbers here agree. They should be exactly exactly the same. That tells you that internally your cash budget is working. So this is your test for your cash budget. I hope this demonstration has helped you better understand the cash budget.